thought we'd find answers on Lenigus, but we just ended up finding more questions. You can say that again. And now we have more problems to fix, too. Like figuring out how to reform Lenigus. That can wait for now. We've got more than enough on our plates to deal with as it is. Like figuring out who's really running the show on Rena. Yeah. Which is why we're going to the Renan homeworld. All the answers we've been looking for are on that planet. The person responsible for all this. The Red Woman and the Renis Alma. The answers have to be there. Are we prepared to finally find them? So, what do we do first when we get there? We know nothing about the Renan homeworld or what we might face once we arrive. We should get a feel for how things are on the ground before we take any serious steps. It's also entirely possible that the first thing we're going to face is an attack. If we come across a capital, we should- <coughs> What? Damn! The hell just happened? Our course has been altered. The coordinates are pointing to a different destination. What's that? The ship's controls aren't accepting my commands. The engine is being shut down. That's bad, right? Quite bad. We've lost control of the ship. Is all of this the Red Women's doing? Are they trying to finish us off before we can land? <laughs> Everyone! Look there! Flower blooming out of Retta? But that flower looks like it's absorbing all of Dennis' energy. And it appears Lenigus is serving as a conduit for that energy to reach here. Could that have been its true purpose all along? If that's true, do you think the people back on Lenigus are all right? <sighs> we can only pray that they are. Damn it! Haven't they taken enough already? When is this going to end?
flower of oblivion. With everything that's happening, we need to get back to Lenigus. Is the ship still offline? Unfortunately, yes. Even more so than when it laid dormant. Can you fix it? Starships are extremely complex machines. One wrong move while we're out here in space could very well cost us our lives. So what? We're just stuck inside here, floating around? For how long? <sighs> I don't believe this. We've made it all this way, and now we're stuck here? We're watching Dana die before our eyes, and we have no choice but to sit here and starve to death? Law, calm down. You're not the only one who's worried here. Right. Sorry. It's still too early to give up. There has to be a way to get out of this. Alfin. Now what? The starship, it... it's back online? No, this is different. Something is pulling our ship in towards it. We managed to get moving, but where are we? It looks like Lenigus in here. Do you think we might run into more Renans here? Or those Red Women? Perhaps. Someone brought us here. The question is, who? We haven't been ambushed, so that probably means they aren't hostile. Still, why would anyone want to bring us here? Uh, hey, Shion! If they wanted to attack us, they could have done so while we were back on the starship. We should see where this path takes us. Shion, just in the nick of time. Here, lend me a hand while I... No! What the... Oh, right. The thorns. <laughs> My bad. No, I'm the one who should apologize. I overreacted. Again, Law? Can't you even go a minute without putting your foot in your mouth? Seriously, it's fine. I'd rather that than people feeling like they're walking on eggshells around me. Besides, I'm the one who should be vigilant about not touching you guys, not the other way around. Actually, I've been meaning to ask. Not being able to touch people. Does it ever get lonely sometimes? I guess I never really thought about it in those terms. It was either accept it for what it was or come undone. Before long, it was just part of my everyday reality. I think I even forgot there was another way to live. Which isn't to say I didn't feel alone. I did. Always. So numb to your reality, you couldn't even recognize it as loneliness? I don't know how you managed. It's fine. I know I'm not alone anymore. But... I can't even touch you. No way of lending you a shoulder when you're down. Even Alfin. I appreciate the concern. Until I get rid of these thorns... I guess I'll have to put up with it just a little longer, but not forever. Alfin promised me that. Maybe it'll be soon, maybe it won't be. But either way, the day will come. And I'll be ready when it does. Yeah, just hang in there. One day, we'll share a big warm hug. You'll see. I promise.
What the? Are you out of your mind? This isn't the time for games, Rinwell. Oh, come on. How am I supposed to resist with you looking all jittery like that? It's called experiencing feelings appropriate to the situation. You ought to try it sometime. Yeah, but seeing you act all nervous, you're making me start to feel nervous, too. Whew! Uh, oh, sorry. Staying alert is important, but too much caution can cloud your judgment. Try to strike a balance. I still can't get over what we saw happening outside the starship. Yeah, our planet's really not doing too hot right about now. I've only ever seen Rena from the surface of Dana, so I figured it was just another round planet like ours. Still though, I never would have imagined Rena actually looked like that. And what's the deal with that giant flower coming out of it? Beats me. I have absolutely no clue. It's so surreal. It Looks like a broken egg or something. Rena and Dana. We were taught that both worlds were spherical bodies that floated amongst the stars in the heavens. But to think that they lied to us not only about the Sovereign and the Crown Contest, but also the form of our own planet. Dohalim. Okay, who's the wise guy that summoned us here? Someone formidable enough to bring our starship along with us. They must be here somewhere. Let's find them. That beam of light joining Dana and Rena. It was the Ren inside that it first came from, right? That's what it looked like. And then the Dan inside responded. Perhaps it was some kind of directive from the Renin homeworld? To reawaken the Wedge and Lenigus? Which would mean that whoever's behind all this is on Rena after all. But what are they after? Is it really worth going through all this trouble just to steal Dana's energy? Try to stay calm. With so many factors we don't understand, dwelling on it won't get us anywhere. <sighs> what is it? No, it's just... Zephyr once told me the same thing. So much for me making progress, huh? You made it this far, didn't you? You notice something, you change it. That's all anyone can do. But you can't stand still in the meantime. This place looks a lot like that room we saw back in the Forbidden Zone. Huh? What's that? Uh, it's one of those! A red woman in disguise. Or is this their true form? So it was a trap? It doesn't look like it can move. Tell me, are you the one who brought us here? That is correct. It is unusual for me to have unexpected guests these days. It can talk. What are you? Hevrecht 35. Hevrecht 35? Is that your name? Correct. What is this place? No, wait, before that, just what exactly are you? Are you somehow associated with the Red Women? Before I answer, I have a question for you. How did you all arrive in this sector? We did not come to this place by choice. Our ship was brought here against our will, 
by a group of red women who can shift into the same form as you. In that case, we can assume my brethren who serve the Great Spirit have deemed you all to be a threat most grave. What do you mean, serve? Are you saying there really is someone more powerful than the Red Women, pulling their strings? What did you do to us? I examined your bodies. You have not been harmed in any way. Identifiers detected. The Sovereign and Maiden are among you. However, you aren't under its control. I see why they viewed you as a danger now. Oh goody, more riddles. Do you think we can trust this thing? Like it or not, it may be our best chance at a ticket out of here. Let's at least hear it out. I shall now answer your questions. We are Helganquil. The Red Women you encountered previously are a form of disguise we employ from time to time, but not our true form. Helganquil? You are on Dake Faisal, a celestial base which drifted here by accident. The will of Rena's Great Spirit no longer reaches us here. Since my sudden separation from the Great Spirit's influence, I have used any and all means to extend my lifespan. As I have done so, I have also set out to monitor and research Rena and Dana from this position. A question. What is this great spirit of which you speak? Is it something that rules over your kind? Correct. The great astral spirit is a large mass of astral energy that fills all of Rena, one with its own will. A voice we cannot refuse. A voice? Just like Dana. The voice of the Great Spirit speaks to our hearts directly, and we have served it without question throughout the ages. Does that mean it was controlling your minds? Wait a second. Could this Great Spirit be the true Sovereign of Rena? The true ruler of Rena? It could be the same thing that's controlling Volron. Wait, back up. You're telling us this great spirit of yours is the one that ordered you things to harvest the astral energy from Dana? I'm not sure I believe that. Why not? We've already made contact with the will of Dana back in the Wedge, and in the Forbidden Zone on Lenegas. If Dana has a will of its own, I don't see why Rena wouldn't. Maybe not, but think about what you're saying. If Dana has a will like Rena, then that would mean that we've been controlled by the voice of Dana this whole time, just like these things. Dana's will hasn't been forcing us to do anything. Yeah, but... Let's assume that what Hevrek 35 claims is true, and that we are indeed cut off from both planets. Even if we had previously been under the control of Dana's will, we would have noticed now that we are disconnected. Your fear is not based in logic. The voice of Dana is much smaller and quieter compared to that of Rena's Great Spirit. Rena's astral energy is amassed at its center, whereas Dana's is shared among all its constituents. So thinly is that energy spread that it cannot coalesce and formulate a will. Our findings here indicate as much. Which explains why we felt its will where we did. The Wedge and Lenegus are where so much of that energy had been accumulated. The Great Spirit's desire is to consume all astral energy, and the pursuit of that desire is why you see Rena in its current state. As a result, it has turned its attention toward Dana. Is that why the Crown Contest is necessary? So that the Great Spirit can feed off of Dana? Indeed, and it was to that end that we Helganquil devised the Crown Contest. Had the initial spirit channeling from 300 years ago succeeded, all of Dana's astral energy would have been seized. <sighs> but the ceremony failed. Lenegas was severely damaged, and you lost both the Sovereign and the Renesalma. Correct. A change in plan was required to ensure the spirit channeling's success. However, 
Recreating the Renes Alma required a vast amount of energy. That is why we turned to Dana. So that was the real purpose behind the Crown Contest. An efficient means to harvest the necessary energy from Dana. This is all happening because of me. Nevertheless, you still haven't answered one of Alfin's original questions. Just why have you brought us here to your base, Hevrecht 35? First, it was to confirm the identities of you, my unexpected visitors. Second, it was to ascertain whether you would be likely to accept my request. A request? But what could someone like you want us to... I wish for you all to slay the Great Spirit. I'm sorry, did you just ask us to kill your master? I did. It is in your best interest that you do so, I might add. What makes you say that? Lenigus has entered the final stage of the spirit channeling plan. As we speak, Dana's energy is being harvested en masse and transmitted to Rena. If nothing is done about the Great Spirit, it will not be long before all is lost. You're saying the destruction we saw earlier is just the beginning? That... We won't let that happen. Why do you want us to kill the Great Spirit so badly? Is it to save our world? To free you, Helganquil, from under its control? Why? No. My primary concern is validating our findings and analysis, which have taken many years to realize. As such, it is my desire to see how your actions impact and change these systems. However, I will not deny that vengeance also plays a part. Vengeance? For what? In spite of our long service to the Great Spirit, our species is on the brink of extinction. You mean... you're dying? At this stage, it would be wise for you to talk with the others. Ask them what you need to know. Once you have your answer, return to me. If you agree to help, I shall fix your ship. Others? Just how many of you are there? I am the only Helganquil who inhabits Dake Faisal. Hey! Hey! It's no use. I think it's done talking to us. Let's take a look around. You can't seriously be buying anything that creature told us, right? I mean, it's practically blackmailing us into doing its dirty work. To be honest, the conversation went on for so long, I'm not sure I understood all of it. How about you, Dohalim? Were you able to follow it at all? At the very least, everything it said about the Renan Great Spirit adds up. At the end of the day, this whole chain of events comes back to astral energy. That being said, had we not previously encountered the will of Dana, I suspect I would find its story much more difficult to believe. The spirit of Rena wants to see Dana completely destroyed. But why? Astral energy is supposed to be a force that creates and shapes the world. It doesn't matter. I don't care if we're up against an entire world or what its game is. We're not going to let it destroy Dana. Right. There is one other thing that concerns me. How the Great Spirit, the Helganquil, and the Crown Contest are all part of a centuries-long plan is clear enough. But what about the Renans? How do they factor into all this? <sighs> now that you mention it, and all that talk, Hevrek 35 never even brought up the Renans once. And as for the Helganquil, we never did find out just what they are either. Maybe it had a reason for keeping it silence. Or perhaps there's even more going on. Maybe the others will shed more light on the matter. Let's find out.
Who are they? Hmm. W what is it? Oh, my apologies. It's just been so long since I've seen any humans from the outside world. Are you a Renan? Hmm? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Hmm? The Overseer told us to answer any questions you might have. Whatever you want to know, we'll tell you as much as we can. But be quick. Our subjects are undergoing a dramatic shift that we don't want to miss. What a weird guy. He must have meant Hevrecht 35 when he mentioned that Overseer. And what was that about subjects? You don't think he meant Dana and Rena, do you? There isn't anyone else we can talk to. I guess we should ask around here. Have you guys lived up here in Dig Faisal with Hevrek 35 for a long time? Yes. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head just how long it's been, though. We regularly go into stasis, so our sense of time has gotten rather out of whack over the years. Why are you all even here in the first place? Originally, this station was where we worked to perform maintenance on Lenegas from the outside. We heard that the facility ended up in its current location due to an accident. Oh, it was terrible. Apparently there was some kind of accident, and when help never arrived, they presumed the entire facility had been destroyed. And you've been working for Hevrecht 35 ever since? Well, at first we thought that there was nobody else inside the facility, but then it turned out the Overseer was there all along. What do you mean? The Helganquil have the technology to cloak themselves around us Renans. As long as they don't do anything obvious, a Renan won't see one, even if it's right in front of them. Which would explain why Xion and I failed to notice the Red Women previously. Do they employ an astral art of some sort? I haven't been able to scientifically confirm it for myself, but from what I understand, the type of cloaking they use is primarily achieved through mechanical means. In addition, they also used hypnosis devices and information control to get us to do what they wanted without being detected. It's a pretty sophisticated operation, especially since it avoids any unnecessary conflict. I have to imagine that's how Lenegas is still run. But aren't the Helganquil themselves controlled by the Great Spirit? If so, why aren't Renans affected by it in the same way? The Great Spirit's mind control only works on Helganquil, so they had to employ other means to manipulate us Renans. You act like this didn't affect you personally. If I was you, I'd be mad as hell at their deceptions. I mean, sure, I was surprised when I first found out about it, but it happened so long ago. Hevrek 35 has clearly ceased concealing itself, though. Why is that? Who can say? My guess is it just got bored, or maybe even a little lonely. Don't you want to go back home to Rena or Lenegas? Our ship is going to be fixed pretty soon. You could ride with us. No way. If we went back after knowing the truth, they'd either just brainwash us or purge us outright. After all this time, there's nothing to be gained from going back. We've all agreed it'd be best to simply stay here and watch everything unfold instead. Things are going just fine with the Overseer. Not that it'll be around much longer. It can't extend its life any further. That said, I'm sure it's pleased to see the final stage of the plan before it passes on, though. Thank you for answering our questions. Can we talk to you for a few minutes? Sure. It's going to be a while before the two planets undergo their next shift, so I can talk until then. Please, tell us what you know about the Helganquil. You mean the Overseer's species? I can't say I know much about them. Well, for starters, where'd they come from? <laughs> where else? From Rena, obviously. From Rena? Wait, are you telling us those things live right alongside the Renans down there? 
Of course not. There's really no such thing as Renans in the first place. Excuse me? Oh, I thought the Overseer explained everything. Apparently not. Please, tell us more. Well, in a nutshell, the Renans were originally created from Danans by the Helganquil. <sighs> But if that's true, then that would mean there aren't any people on Rena. There aren't. But there are Helganquil. That's what the name literally means in their language. People of Rena. But what need could they possibly have to create a whole new race of people? It was a way to bolster their dwindling workforce. I trust you're aware that the Helganquil are on the verge of extinction, yes? In essence, we were created to carry on their work for the Great Spirit after they all die. They gathered Danans who had an affinity for astral arts and proceeded from there. That's why we, as their descendants, can all cast arts, albeit to varying degrees. Let me get this straight. Are you saying Renans were originally created from Danans that the Helganquil kidnapped? Wait, that explains why almost nobody can use astral arts on Dana now. Helganquil technology is truly amazing. The way they alter their bodies is far less invasive than your conventional surgeries. They have these tiny machines that are practically invisible, which they insert into their bodies and... Enough! You needn't tell us anymore. How can you speak so calmly about all of this? I guess I can see how, when viewed in a certain light, their ways may sound grotesque. But if you ask me, I think they ultimately did us a favor. They saved us from crawling the earth in ignorance. If it meant their hands had to get a little dirty in the process, then so be it. Anyway, the Helganquil are the real Renans. Personally, I don't think it's such a big deal. They're also mostly the ones behind what you see going on between the two planets. I think that covers just about everything worth knowing. I see. Thanks for filling us in. Does he really expect us to believe that Renans never truly existed? How absurd. Dohalim. Just when I think we're getting to the bottom of it all, some new revelation smacks us in the face. Then let's hope this is our last revelation for a while. Do you know anything about a spirit channeling plan? If you mean the first plan from 300 years ago, then yes. Do you know what its main objective was? Yes. It was to use Lenigus to siphon off Dana's astral energy and send it to Rena. Exactly. However, there were two problems we had to consider. First was how to collect and send such a large quantity of astral energy without it becoming sentient. Second, we had to figure out how to convert Dana's energy so it would be compatible with Rena. I take it the solutions to those problems were to use the Wedge for the collection, and then the Sovereign and Maiden to convert the energy. We have a winner! However, the first plan failed when the Sovereign was overwhelmed and became frenzied. <sighs> the reason for that is because the Maiden lost control, I'm told he slaughtered many Renans in Helganquil that day. <sighs> For the next plan, we tried to recreate the Renis Alma, but we didn't have nearly enough of the other non-dark astral energy types. To amend that, we set our sights on Dana, and implemented a system whereby we could extract energy from it. And the crown contest began. Correct. Since the Maiden had been the failing point in the previous plan, it was decided to replace her role with machinery to avoid further mishaps. A new Sovereign had to be made as well. It was such tremendously difficult work, its success was dubious. But from the look of things, it would appear such worries were unfounded. So that's what the purpose of that room we found in the Forbidden Zone was. What about the flower that sprouted from Rena? Flower? Oh, that thing. 
That's the physical manifestation of all the astral energy that's been harvested from Dana. As I'm sure you've noticed, it's quite a lot of energy. At this point, it's likely that it's become physically integrated with Rena's planetary structure. Hevrecht 35 mentioned that the spirit channeling plan is entering its final stage. Is that true? It is. I never thought I would live to see the day with my own eyes. And yet here we are. Are we done talking now? If it's all the same to you, I'd really rather not miss anything that's about to happen. He talks like the potential end of the world is just another day on the job. You've got to remember that these guys have been living alone up here for a long time. Who knows what shape their minds are in? It feels like our whole world has been turned upside down. Is there anything we know that's still true at this point? Seriously, I'm still trying to process the fact that we Renans were created by the Helganquil, let alone the Sovereign and Maiden stuff. Let's take a moment to gather ourselves. I know all of this is a lot to believe and take in, but... I think it's fair to say that we've found the answers we've been looking for. Does everyone agree? Agreed. Though I'll admit that I never expected it to all boil down to Rena's great spirit being behind everything. Everything that's happened, everything we've endured, it's all because of astral energy. And to get that energy, the Great Spirit took control of the Helganquil. Then the Helganquil created the Renans, who went on to invade and rule over the Danans. Plus, the reason the Great Spirit can't directly control the Renans as well is likely because they were originally Danans all along. <laughs> Either way, I think it's fair to say we've all had a lot to take in at once. Maybe too much, even. We should probably take it easy and rest our minds a bit. Why don't we all take some time to think things over, before we decide on our next move? That's a good idea, Kisara. If the Renan Great Spirit really is behind all this, then we've got a really big fight ahead of us. Because it's not just Dana on the line, but Rena too. If we're going to do this, we need to be completely sure of ourselves. So let's go ahead and break off for now. We aren't in any immediate danger, so we should be okay. You sure you don't want to be alone right now? I could ask you the same question. I figured I'd get all my thinking in while walking around and checking up on everybody. I'll go along with you. I'm interested to hear what's on everyone's minds too. Sounds good. Let's go find them. Everyone's just gone their own way, huh? Yeah. Let's hit up each spot. Everything we thought we knew. It was all just a fabrication that the Red Women, no, that the Helganquil, made up. Right. Assuming we can believe anything that Hevrek 35 has told us, that is. Well, if the names are anything to go by, it's possible the Helganquil could be behind the fruits of Helgen too. But if Hevrek 35 was telling the truth, and this was all just one massive lie, does that mean everything we've done up until now has been pointless? No, I don't think so. Or at least I hope not. I think it just means we've lost our foothold for now. That's all. Really? Well then, if we've lost it, I guess we'll just have to find another. All of us together. And if we can't find one, then we'll make a new one. End of story. Make one, huh? I see. Right then. Count me in. Oh, it's you two. Does he seem like he's doing any better now? He who? Oh, you mean Dohalim, don't you? I know that we're all struggling to wrap our minds around it all, but he looked like he was taking it really hard earlier. What do you think about everything we've learned? About the Renans and the Great Spirit and all that? On some level, I'm not even really sure what to think, to be honest. I mean... The Great Spirit is like a huge, natural disaster, but with a mind and will of its own. 
But if that thing's hellbent on trying to destroy our planet, then the only thing left for us to do is stop it. As for the Renans, I suppose my feelings on that are a bit more mixed. How so? Coexistence between Danans and Renans in Menencia is still a work in progress. In my case, I think that's partly because deep down, I was still on guard around Renans. So, <laughs> to be told that they're like us, that they're actually just like us is, well, <laughs> I guess it's a little deflating, to be honest. You kept a pretty level head. You mean about the Renans? At the end of the day, the Helgan Quill and the Great Spirit are the ones who are responsible. But at the same time, I realize that not every Danon is necessarily going to believe that either. I know you're already aware of this, but the list of grievances the Danons have against the Renans is long, and understandably so. And if people then find out that they're all actually one and the same, yeah, I don't think they're going to take to it too kindly. Even just among the Danons, I'm sure there'll be some who emerge with power and some who won't. I think if we can find a way to get rid of that imbalance, then we'll be in a truly good place. Well, first we can try to figure out what to do about the existing conflicts we have. Yeah. It'd be nice if one day people could learn to get past their hatred like Rinwell did. It's no small task. We can't pretend like the past didn't happen and ask people to forget their very real pain and suffering. Right. Everybody has their reasons for feeling the way that they do. But if we just keep yelling at each other about it, we'll never move on. In a worst case scenario, it might lead to even more people getting killed. And we all have to figure out how to meet halfway. Not just that, but to also embrace each other's pain in a sense. That's an interesting way of putting it. It's true. Everybody has their own scars, their own trauma. The first step to healing those wounds is to put aside that hatred. It won't be achieved through reasoning, but I think it's a good first step, if nothing else. And now, I think I see a way to move forward. But to do that, first we need to make sure our planet isn't going to get wiped out. You both seem awfully calm. <laughs> Only because after everything we've seen, we don't have the energy to keep being shocked. How are you holding up, Rinwell? That whole talk about the Renans looked like it shook you up a bit. Yeah. I get this sinking feeling whenever I remember how Dan and mages like my family were persecuted and died out. And now, I finally know why that is. <sighs> but I was thinking... If Renans end up living together with Danans again, then mages won't be such an unusual thing to see on Dana anymore, right? <laughs> I know it's not as simple as all that, but... Danans probably won't be so quick to let their guards down, and there might be Renans who still act superior because of their arts. It wouldn't surprise me. 300 years of bad blood and prejudice isn't going to be an easy thing to overcome. Yeah. I know firsthand just how much hatred can take hold in your heart once you let it in. But even so, I was still able to change. And if I can change, so can anyone else. So I was thinking maybe, I don't know, I could use my position as both a Danon and a mage to help bring both sides together. Renwell. That great spirit worries me too, though. Dana's will feels so warm and inviting. So why is Rena's will trying to destroy our entire planet? Now that you mention it, Everick 35 and the other scientists here never really brought that up. Maybe they don't know either. Maybe. But regardless, at the end of the day, Dan is still our home. 
There's no way we can let it be destroyed. We won't. We'll keep it safe no matter what. I still can't believe it, man. You're not the only one still trying to make sense of all this. Believe me. Really? You've never struck me as the type of guy to get hung up on these sorts of things. Did you forget what happened back in Thistleum? Once my memory started coming back to me, I felt completely and totally lost. It was really that bad for you? Yeah, it was. But thanks to Law and everybody else, I remembered that I still had things out there worth fighting for. Man, I think you might be a better guy than me, Alfin. All I can remember thinking was, when's this guy gonna get his act together? Law. I was too worried about repeating the same mistakes I'd made back with my dad, and running away from the truth. That was no way to live. And I've tried to stay strong, my way. But all this talk about other races and the world ending... If I can be honest with you guys, it's just all too much for me to handle right now. I know this is going to sound strange coming from me, but maybe the key is not to worry too much about the big stuff right now. Oh? I used to worry all the time about my thorns, for obvious reasons. But I never really opened up to anyone about them. And when I realized my visions pointed to a threat that was bigger than me, I didn't know what I should do, or who to tell. But that's when I finally got it. You guys were all there for me, to teach me what's really important. I just had to open up and listen. In other words, if you let the big picture stuff get you all muddled up inside, you'll begin to lose sight of what you really care about. Yeah, I think you're right. The thing that's most important, what I really care about, all I want to do is protect the people that really matter to me, to fight for them. That's good enough, right? Not everyone is strong enough to fight. Huh? It's something your dad told me once when he was still alive. Law, you know you're strong enough to fight. And you're strong enough to protect the people you care about. Forget all the big stuff going on. Just don't lose sight of what you want to protect in the first place. Sound good? Yeah. Yeah, I think it does. <laughs> it's like a big weight's been lifted off my shoulders. I'll fight to protect the people around me. Just like I always have. I think that's best. I apologize for making you witness that. You mean hearing the origins of the Renans? Indeed. It's shocking to have so many things I thought to be indelible fade away in mere seconds. Even I'm still not sure everything we've heard here is actually true. Let's not delude ourselves. If what we've heard is a lie, it's a rather elaborate one. Hmm. <laughs> I can only imagine that you must have been constantly feeling like this, ever since your memory returned, Alfin. And you as well, Shion. About your thorns, and being a maiden. That's just part of being alive, don't you think? Well, to say the least. But enough about me. I'm not concerned for myself. What concerns me is all of the other Renans out there. When you say the other Renans, you mean the ones that are living on Lenigus or Dana, right? Correct. Even if we stop the Great Spirit from annihilating Dana, our problems will still remain. Putting aside the untold state that Rena may be in, if we do not truly belong there, we will have to think long and hard about where it is that we wish to return to. So, I guess your only real choices at this point are to either stay on Lenigus, or come down to Dana, huh? And right now, Lenigus might not even be a safe option. And at the same time, 
Danans are hardly likely to embrace Renans with open arms. If the issue is forced, things could turn dire. There is, after all, three centuries worth of hatred to overcome between us. And the victims of our rule have absolutely every right to feel animosity towards us Renans. Our own circumstances as the aggressors are irrelevant. I didn't expect the former Lord of Menencia to be so down about people reconciling. Menencia's fate was a stroke of good luck. There had been backlash over how it had been ruled, and I was blessed to have sympathizers among my ranks. Still, even now, there remain ardent dissidents. But things can still change if you have the right people to help lead the way. Isn't that what you hope to achieve on Lenegas, after this is all over? Indeed. I have fully accepted the burden of that responsibility. In that regard, I remain determined. On that note, I have something of a favor to ask of you, Alfin. Oh? What is it? I wish for you to serve as a mediator so that the Renans can live on Dana peaceably. As the one and only Blazing Sword, I suspect the Danans may listen to what you have to say when problems arise. And I take it that you'll be the one to represent the Renans? Yes. I realize that I'm asking quite a lot of you. However, the fact of the matter is that it will take time for Renans to re-enter Danan society without any bloodshed. That is why. <laughs> You're the same as ever, Dohalim. Is it too much? No, relax. You get so tense and formal when you're asking for a favor. Listen, there's no need for that. We're friends. <clears throat> you're too kind. I can see you were raised well. That's some high praise, Alfin. Then I'll ask once again, this time just as friends. Alfin, will you help me? You don't even need to ask. Of course I will. Thank you, my friend. Well, it sounds like everyone's learning from their past and using it to create a better future for everyone. What about you, Xion? How do you feel about the origin of the Renans? To be honest, I'm... I'm not really all that shocked, actually. I mean, I might be a Renan in the literal sense, but I've never really felt like one of them. Right now, it's... kind of a mystery. How do you mean? Because for a really, really long time, all I ever thought about was how I was going to die. Not if or when, but how. I thought I'd die alone. That fate had me in its steely grip. I would have never imagined that I'd be traveling with someone like you, fighting to save Rena and Dana. I mean, how could I have? It's been going on for 300 years. All this tragedy and destruction. When you consider the Helganquil's part in all this, it's been even longer than that. It was Naori's hope that somehow, someone in the future would be able to stop it before it was too late. How it fell on us, of all people, to heed that call is a mystery. I don't think Naori was hoping that we would just stop the world from getting destroyed. She considered me, a Danon, as a real person. And she very much cherished her own people, too. I don't think she wanted the world to be saved just so they could go back to hurting each other. Oh, maybe this is what she meant. Huh? When we were talking to Kisara earlier, about all that stuff like everyone's needing to meet halfway and embrace each other's pain and suffering, she said that the first step down that path was for each of us to put aside our own hatred. That means forgiving other people, even and especially before they forgive you. Forgiving. So it goes both ways, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I don't just mean forgiving things that happened in the past, either. Conflicts will keep happening. If we have any hope of moving on and building a better future, we have to all learn to forgive each other. You know, you're right. People can hurt one another, without even meaning to. I know that better than most, thanks to these thorns. It's not going to be easy getting past this pain. But if we can do it, I'm sure there'll come a time when we can all truly understand each other. I'm there with you, Xion. 
I too want to protect the world we live in and all the people we care about. I think that's the very least I can do to repay Naori for everything that she did. Yeah, I want a future that she would feel proud to live in, and I'm going to fight for it. Whoa there, Savior Girl. We're here to save you too, you know. Yes, I know. <sighs> Don't worry, I haven't forgotten. I want to live, and that's the honest truth. Well, is everybody ready to do what needs to be done? I am. There's a lot to think about, but at the end of the day, Dan is still in danger. I don't care who we're up against. We'll kick their ass! What are your thoughts, Alfin? I want to know what's on your mind, too. Like Law said, if we have to fight the Great Spirit on Rena, then so be it. It's trying to rob us of our entire world, and it's going to take not just our home, but all of existence along with it. That alone is enough to make it our enemy. But it's not only that. One way or another, I think beating the Great Spirit is going to be tied to us saving Xion. You're saying there's a chance? You're referring to the vision of destruction we all saw in Lenigus, I take it? Yeah. Three centuries ago, the astral energy that appeared at the spirit channeling ceremony showed Naori that vision. And to hear Xion tell it, it's the same one that she sees from her own thorns as well. Indeed. Xion's thorns are comprised of dark astral energy, the one type which we know is native only to Rena. And if Rena's great spirit is what's behind Dana's pending destruction, then... Xion's thorns are the great spirit? It's not actually on Rena like we thought? We don't know anything for certain. At the very least, though, I think it's possible her thorns are a part of the great spirit. While the main body resides in Rena. Xion. If these thorns really are a part of Rena's great spirit, I'm going to go over there and give it a piece of my mind and then some. The question is, how do we confront it? Suffice it to say, that flower growing out of Rena is enormous, large enough to house the will of an entire planet. The Wedge and Lenigus were both hard enough for us to overcome in their own right. This is an altogether greater challenge for merely six. And we only know about the Thorns' connection thanks to Naori. Hevrick 35 has been observing the Great Astral Spirit this whole time. It wouldn't ask us to fight it unless it has a plan of some sort. Let's go see what that is. Our minds are made up. Let's go give Hevrek 35 our answer. So if the Sovereign and Maiden were originally boot-up programs for Lenigus, what about now? Even with the Forbidden Zone in ruins and the Renis Alma stolen, Lenigus is functioning fine. If it needed us before, it doesn't appear to now. First they lumber you with a position you never asked for, then you're discarded like you're nothing? Who the hell do they think they are? More importantly, who do they think we are? We might not even factor into their list of concerns. I just hope everyone on Lenigus is safe. Worst comes to worst, Lenigus is equipped with a large number of starships the people can escape in. As long as the whole satellite doesn't suddenly explode or something, they should be fine. Wait, explode? In any case, if we're truly going to make a difference, it's on Rena we're needed, not Lenigus. The people there will be fine, I'm sure of it. Right. <laughs> 